So on to the uh, last medal category um, for the evening. And so this is the Marsden Medal. And so awarded for a lifetime of outstanding service to the cause or profession of science in recognition of service rendered to the cause or profession of science in the widest connotation of the phrase. And so, um, spoiler alert, there's actually two medals being awarded this year. Um, you know, so there's independence of judges, right? We can't control the judges. And so they came back and said, well, there, there are two people that are equally amazing. We cannot pick. We said, well, pick one. Um, this is uh, Heidi and I, not just me. And they said, no, they're both equally uh, uh, outstanding and amazing and worthy of recognition. And so for this year, I don't think it happens very often we're awarding two medals for the Marsden. And so <clears throat> um, the first is uh, John Montgomery, um, University, Professor John Montgomery, University of Auckland, and the second is Professor Warren Tate, University of Otago, and they're not in any order. Um, so, uh, the second Marsden Medal um, for tonight is to Professor Warren Tate, um, so from Biochemistry at the University of Otago, has a stellar national and worldwide reputation for his internationally recognised research discoveries in molecular biology and human disease and his collaborative research. He is renowned for his national and global leadership and energy for developing science policy and protecting research investment. He has trained over 100 postgraduate students, many of whom have gone on themselves to have stellar research careers, both in New Zealand and on the global stage in academia and industry. He has held many research-related leadership roles nationally with the Health Research Council of New Zealand and the Science Board of Envy and the Morris Wilkins uh, Corps and internationally with the Human Frontiers of Science Organization in Strasbourg and the Asia Pacific International Molecular Biology Network. He has led and organized key first international conferences in New Zealand. Professor Tate has presented and published extensively for both academic and community audiences. So, uh, <coughs> one of this year's Master Medals. Thank you, like John, I'm just going to stand here and chat. And uh, can, say, can I say first that I'm very proud to be part of the Southern Trio that's come here tonight and, uh, and won medals. And I should also like to say John and I have passed, crossed paths at various uh, places and served on national panels together. I've always enjoyed my association with him, so I kind of feel I know everybody really, which is very good. I'm also like to express my pride that my two daughters, uh, Melanie and Catherine and her partner Theo and my beloved grandson Hugo that's in the back row there are here tonight to kind of help me get through this process. <laughs> the Marsden Medal for me has special significance because my brother won it in 2005. My brother Kevin was a um, soil scientist, worked with land care and worked on climate change and carbon recycling. And sadly, last year he developed motor neuron disease and died this year. So when I was asked if I would accept nomination, I thought, well, wow, what a wonderful way to honour his memory and also his tremendous contribution uh, uh, to science. So to be standing up here, I mean, uh, nominating was enough, but to be standing up here, it's, it's a well moment, moment, I have to say. I should say that the uh, scope of the Marsden Medal, which is the broadest possible involvement in science, has been consistent with my whole ethos of doing science. And one or two times today, we've seen Time magazines uh, uh, put on the screen, and one, I think, by Sean. And it was a Time magazine essay which actually inspired me in a way to kind of uh, formulate my ethos in practising science. And this was an essay which uh, started by saying science was among the highest endeavours of human activity, but it was a time when there was some science fraud going on. And so it said that scientists should actually make sure they protect science and look after it. And, you know, that resonated with me. It also said, another part of the essay was that good scientists do great scientists, but great scientists do great science, but also train young people 
to be scientists and mentor emerging scientists so they can go on and be great scientists. So I thought that resonated so much with how I wanted to be a scientist that I've actually uh, held that uh, in the development of my scientific career. And of course, um, you know, what I've achieved out of it really relies so heavily on those people, those young people that have come to work with me. And I'm very grateful for the many students and research teams that I've had as I've, um, as I've carried on. My first research effort was in discovery molecular biology based on how proteins are made in cells. And I was fortunate to make two or three fundamental discoveries in that um, as I was working on that. And when I became head of Department of Biochemistry at Otago, quite frequently students would come very confused and saying they're not sure whether they want a career in science and they're not sure whether New Zealand can provide them with a sustained career. So I used to quietly tell them how, what a fulfilling career I'd had, mainly in New Zealand. And one of the, my key points was that I've actually managed to make two or three fundamental discoveries from New Zealand in science. And a few of those students looked at me quizzically and said, what, only two or three? <laughs> so those ones were students that I never encouraged further on going into <laughs> science. Okay. So one of those discoveries, fundamental discoveries, was of a new mechanism of gene regulation. And it turns out it's very rare in biology in general, but it's used by viruses, including HIV. In fact, HIV needs the mechanism to be an infective virus. So that shifted my focus of research to HIV biology and trying to exploit this vulnerable site in the viral life cycle. And we've now learned how to modulate this event and we've developed the lead compounds that could be exploited uh, by the biotech industry as a, as a new class of drugs within the uh, drugs that are together. The biotech industry at the moment feels they're on hold on developing new drugs like that, so we've had a lot of discussions, but it's at the moment just um, uh, sitting on hold. A chance a lecture I went to on electrophysiology of mammalian memory, which I didn't understand a word of, inspired me because I thought, well, molecular biology could be applied to this was in the 1980s. So I actually started a collaboration on um, understanding the molecular basis of memory, and that's led to a, about a 25-year very fulfilling collaborative effort uh, with neuroscientists. Uh, started on mammalian memory, then on Alzheimer's disease, and now in my research lab we're trying to develop a therapeutic that would prevent the development of Alzheimer's disease from a natural brain protein, which is neuroprotective. Most recently, I've been working on an unexplained disease, generally called ME, myalgic encephalomyelitis, or chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, suffered by about 20,000 people in New Zealand. It's debilitating, lifelong, and there is no molecular diagnostic test or effective therapies. It's dear to my heart because uh, my family have been afflicted by this disease, and I understand just how uh, there is a need for uh, some sort of improvement in the lives of people that uh, have the disease. So. Uh, that's led me to be working uh, on molecular studies in patients, and that's been very exciting and actually very humbling uh, to be able to uh, work with patients who are so uh, grateful that somebody is actually trying to do something about their uh, illness. And we've actually discovered quite a few things about the illness and the molecular changes that occur in these patients. And what I hope in the few years that I've got left and a vertical position doing science will be <laughs> to try and find pathways to make life better uh, for, these, um, for these people. I mentioned before that the Time magazine article said scientists should actually look after science and, and, and I've uh, found natural ways of, of being involved in policy and investment in science, both nationally and internationally. As it was indicated, I've done quite a lot of work over a long period of time with the Health Research Council, and latterly, uh, the latter part of that was 
seven years of chair of the biomedical committee and on the governance board, and then more recently on the science board uh, when Wayne Matt, uh, uh, Dr. Wayne Matt, who was Minister of Science, um, appointed a science board. Um, there I met my greatest national science challenge, and that was when the new minister, Stephen Joyce, announced that there were going to be national science challenges um, without any policy background. And so uh, ministry officials like Prue, who was here uh, this afternoon, were racing around and the science board had to help in instituting that and take responsibility for them. I must say that was the first time I've had sleepless nights in practicing science because I thought my legacy might be to completely destroy the science ecosystem. Um, uh, science national science challenges are a great idea, but integrating them into the existing science system has been, I think, quite difficult. And fortunately now we've had four or five years, Prue was telling me that they just had a review of them, and it's, it, so far it hasn't been as destructive as, as it might have been. <laughs> um, internationally, I was targeted by senior Japanese and Korean scientists to be part of a, a, a group that formed an international molecular biology network in the Asia-Pacific region, modelled on the very successful European um, organisation called EMBO, which you may have heard of. And that, I've, uh, spent, we spent about 10 years getting it sort of underway going, and it's slowly evolving. And these things, of course, uh, 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 take enormous amount of time. But it's, it's starting to actually be successful and provide a very important network uh, for the region. And then more latterly, when New Zealand was um, uh, allowed into the National fr uh, Human Frontiers of Science Organisation based in Strasbourg, that was originated by the G7 countries, and that provided opportunities for young New Zealand scientists and also mature scientists to get funding in fundamental uh, research, multidisciplinary research, multi-country research. I served on the National Science Council of that uh, with Sir Richard Fall as New Zealand sort of got underway to be able to exploit that sort of opportunity. I might say that, of course, through a, a long scientific career, there's some bad care days some great disappointments, and there's a Maori proverb which I uh, find has kind of comforted me during those very bad hair days in science, and it goes like this, if I can remember, uh, it's at this time of night. So, whaia te iti um, kahuranga ki te tuoho koi mei uh, uh, me uh, uh, monga uh, tai Tai. And what that, uh, one English translation of that might be, um, aim for the highest cloud, because if you miss it, you might hit a lofty peak. Kia ora, thank you.